Hello! Yes, it is me, Callie G. I am a scientist today. I have nice hair. Ooh, there we go, that looks nice. Yes, I look stunning, absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. Anyways, I don't know. But here, can I, see when I'm wearing these gloves, I cannot use my phone. You're watching. It said that you're watching on the thing. <laughs> Mr. Zay is here. Okay, I can, can, can you, Mr. Aaron, oh, yes. can you click that little X? <laughs> this little X, yeah. that one, hi. Hello. Yes, uh, today we are doing science time with the queens. I am the queen. This is the science time. That's Mr. Aaron. So, right there. <laughs> and we're going to start very soon. What time is it? I keep looking at my wrist like I have a watch on, but I don't. What time is it, Miss Barb? Miss Kelly, it is 11.31. Thank you. Okay, we're going to start at 11.35. That's just giving some people some time to get in. Also, I need to send a link to my grandmother, so hold on. I'm going to do the same. Yes, yeah, so let's all send a link to our grandma so that they can watch us do science. Exactly. Science is a great time. There's Miss Callie. Sure. Facebook. Okay. Here we go. It's going very slowly. <laughs> okay. Let us take a peek. Send this to my grandmama. Okay. How is everybody doing today? Good? That's good. I'm putting down, join us, it promises to be sciency. Well, it's going to be something. And sci I'll take sciency. We'll do it. Here we go. I'm going to the live video. Yes, that is happening. I'm not sure if I should spell it sciency or sciency. Which which do you suggest? Um, sciency. Probably sciency. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, yeah. We'll do sciency. Send in messenger. Awesome! This is gonna be great, guys. It is going to be absolutely stunning. Okay, search for people. Baba. Oh, she's not under Baba. What am I talking about? I don't know. Science Send. Time. Oh wait, I'm gonna say something about this. Science, science time. There we go. Science. Baba, this is the link. There we go. Science time. Science time. Wink, 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 wink. <laughs> it is absolutely stunning. Shit. At least it's like Send. ten second delay or something. I don't know. <laughs> also, I'm going to send this. To my grandfather, my grandpapa, Gramps. I think my grandfather would really like this show. You think so? I think so. I know. It's, it's about reading, about science, it's about colorful people and with yellow skin. What's yes. not to love? Lisa Simpson lookalikes. Exactly. It's a great. <laughs> okay, anyways. Okay, that is happening. I did that. Yes, here we are. I'm going to turn off the Wi-Fi on this disconnect. Stunning. Okay. We're going to go back. What time is it now? It's 11.33. Yay, we've got two minutes. Let's chat. Two minutes. Mr. Aaron, what's your favorite time of thing about science? <laughs> what's, my, what's my favorite time about science? Favorite thing about science. Favorite yes. thing about science is probably what's called the reaction. It's when things happen and then something like shows up like it explodes or it changes colors or it gets fizzy or it smells weird. Yes. Or, or is there anything else that happens? Uh, makes uh, n n noise. Noise. Yes, absolutely. Noise. Yep. Science. Do you mind scooting over just a teeny bit? Yep. Like with your chair. Oh, the chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you didn't clarify. I am sorry. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Here we are. Miss Kelly, thank you for joining me. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> welcome to Science Time with the Queens. This is at Reading Time at the Queens Studio. Oh, see, my ba Baba said we're on. Yay! Yay! Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. Oh, crap. This is Father. 
grandma. Uh, she needed to be on, yeah. So she's on. <laughs> yay! Someone says, yay, science! Yay! We love science! Science is great. Science is fun. Is it 11.35 yet? It's probably close to 11.35. Okay, it's wonderful. Hi. Yes, we are here. Hi, my name is Miss Callie. This is Mr. Aaron. Thank you for showing. Yes, I am yellow. I am stunning. I am absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yes, this is happening. Yes, today we are going to do two things. One, learn about science. Two, learn about germs and explosions. And three, we're going to read. And yeah, we're reading, of course, but you know, that, that's, that should go. Oh, we're, reading. Saying, yeah, we're doing reading all the time. <laughs> okay, um, what do we, oh yeah, I, I play a song at the beginning of this Yes, you program. do, absolutely. Uh, we have a little, a special jingle. Okay, do you mind getting my little jingle book? Which jingle book? That this jingle, jingle book. book. Yes. This oh. jingle book. This this jingle book. Open it up, and there is a jingle inside that if I must remember. Insist. Okay, it's not this one. I am sorry. I did not give you proper instruction. Oh I gosh. am sorry. I could probably find it. Is it. This one. Awesome. I'm just the, gonna. Yeah, perfect exactly. and amazing. <laughs> and we are in sync. Hello. Actually, we're in the studio. We are not in a sync. <laughs> okay. Hi, we're gonna start right now. You've got to ask those questions, got to use your head, make some observations, compare it to what you read. For everything that's not in a book, an experiment will help us take a look. And when we collect data and make a conclusion, we can then Science time for helping us have fun. Science time with the queens. Woo! Yay! Science time. There we go. Starting it off strong. I felt like that was an experiment. Yeah. <laughs> well, we made it. We made Yay. it to the jingle, and we sang the jingle, so that's good. Yes, okay, I've said this a million times, but it is. I am Miss Callie. It is me here today at Science Time with the Queens. I'm very happy that you're here. And we have Mr. Aaron. Hi, Hello. Mr. Aaron. How are you doing today? I'm tired. Absolutely tired. I'm tired. I understand that. I did a show last night. We did, um, we did chapter read on Thursday, so we're doing lots of things. Yay. It's a good time. Yeah. Well, we're doing science today. I don't know if you've... We got sciencey things going on all around us. We're gonna do a science experiment later, Yay! so stay tuned for that. Yes. But before we do any science or any reading or anything like that, I feel like we should learn the Macarena. Here we sure. go. Just kidding. No, let's let's learn science. Uh, okay, science. Okay. Well, <laughs> we kind of already did one, so we're okay. doing experiments. Yes, experiments. So scientists do experiments. Scientists do experiments. Doctors and all those other people, but yes, we're going to focus on scientists. So okay. we're gonna thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Thumbs down. We're going to shift them a little bit. Okay. Scientist. Scientist. So why are we doing this? So these are like beaker bottles or oh. things that we pour things into. Like okay. the the crowd, the science experiment later. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, yeah, so, so pretend you're we, scientist. Because this is person. Exactly. So you say person. Exactly. Scientist. Scientist. Perfect. Okay, there we so go. first sign. First sign. Scientists. Scientists work on curing diseases, right? That is true, yeah. Awesome. So we'll make it really simple. We're going to do disease. Okay, disease. So we're going to take our middle finger. Okay. We're going to kind of poke it out. Mm -hmm. We're going to have one on our forehead and one okay. on our stomach, because normally when we get sick, that's where it hurts. Yeah. So it's just going to be like, ooh, ooh. disease, ooh. sickness. Sickness. Ugh, I'm sick. Exactly. Oh, ooh. I have a disease. Disease. Sick. Okay. Okay. So there. there we go. What's our third sign? I'm trying to think. There's a really, really good third sign. It's our third sign. There's. Okay, I'm, so we got scientist. Scientist. scientist disease. Disease. We forgot do, the sign. Do we have a third sign? <laughs> I think we. We only have two. two. Oh man. Oh. How do you use an explosion? Ooh. Okay. Okay. So take your hands. Okay. <laughs> You're just gonna go like this. <laughs> explosion. Boom. <laughs> Explosion! There we go! I like that. That one's a good one. That's okay. There we go. There we go. Explosion. Explosion. I like it. We're so. gonna, hopefully we'll have something like an explosion later. So today, as scientists, we're going to learn about sickness mm -hmm. and explosions. Yay! And reading. And reading. <laughs> if I can do it, you can do it too. <laughs> there okay. we go. 
So, speaking of reading, I have a very fun book that I'd like to share with you. Yay! It's called Ada Twist, Scientist, and we are going to be doing something different. Usually, I like say lots of things along with the book, but today I wanted to show you an app that I found. This is not sponsored by the app, but I thought that you would like it. It's called Novel Effect. And what happens is you take a picture book like this. They, they don't have all picture books. They just have some. Take a picture book like this and you read along to it and it does music and sounds because it knows the words of the book. So it just like cues it up and makes them go at the same time as what you're reading. Perfect for bedtime stories. Perfect for an afternoon of reading if you just want to just something up. Um, and they have a track for Ada to a scientist. So we're going to do that right now. Hopefully it can hear me. Well, you're yeah. really loud, so I think it'll be fine. I think we'll be okay. We'll just make it fine. Okay, but this is Ada Twist Scientist by Andrea Beatty, and it's illustrated by David Roberts. And I will give you the nod when we are ready. That's how you know it's ready. Ada Marie. Ada Marie. I can't, I can't hear me. Maybe it needs to come closer. Do you want me to hold it? Yeah. Yeah. Seamless transition. Ada Marie. Ada Marie. <coughs> Ada Marie said not a word till the day she turned three. She bounced in her crib and looked all around observing the world but not making a sound. She learned how to climb and make her big break with a trail of chaos left in her wake. She ran through the day chasing each sound and sight and didn't slow down till she conked out at night. I hope you can hear Her parents were frazzled, but tried not to freak, as Ada grew bigger and still did not speak. Clearly, young Ada, with lots in her head, would have something to say when it ought to be said. That's just what happened when Ada turned three. She tore through the house on a fact-finding spree and climbed up the clock just as high as she could. Her parents yelled, Stop! as all good parents would. Ada's chin quivered, but she did not cry. She took a deep breath and she simply asked, Why? This is really cool. <laughs> Why does it tick? And why does it talk? Why don't we call it a granddaughter clock? Why are there pointy things stuck to a rose? Why are there hairs up inside of your nose? She started with why, and then what, how, and when. By bedtime, she came back to why once again. She drifted to sleep as her dazed parents smiled at the curious thoughts of a curious child who wanted to know what the world was about. They kissed her and whispered, you'll figure it out. Aww. Here they are. Why, how, what, what? Her parents kept up with their high-flying kid whose questions and chaos both grew as she did. Even Miss Greer found her hands were quite full when young Ada's chaos wrecked havoc at school. But this much was clear about Miss Ada Twist. She had all the traits of a great scientist. Ooh, scientist. Thank you. See, here's some explosions. 
They're very excited about the explosions. I'm being quiet so I don't mess up the thing. Ooh! Explosions. Children. You get the picture. Ada was busy that first day of spring, testing the sound that make mockingbirds sing. When a horrible stench whacked her right in the nose, a pungent aroma that curled up her toes. Zowie, said Ada, which got her to thinking, what is the source of that terrible stinking? How does a nose know there's something to smell? And does it still stink if there's no nose to tell? She rattled off questions and tapped on her chin. She'd start at the start, where she ought to begin. A mystery, a riddle, a puzzle, a quest. This was the moment that Ada loved best. Dun, dun, dun. What do you think the 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 the, uh, the stink is? Maybe we'll find out. Let's see. Ada did research to learn all she could of smelling and smells, both the stinky and good. One hypothesis Ada can't, thought could be true. The terrible stink came from Dad's cabbage stew. She tested and tested, but soon Ada knew it was time to come up with hypothesis two. That's her smelling device. You see? And there's, do you see the kitty? There's the kitty. Then Zowie! The stink struck again, just like that. Hypothesis two, it's caused by the cat. The cat couldn't make such a stink on its own. It needed perfume and some fancy cologne. So young Ada tested. The test was a flop. She started again, but her parents yelled, stop! So here she's testing, <laughs> you know, do a normal test. But then she's about to put her in the washer. Ah! Ada Marie, Ada Marie, to the thinking chair, now, by the time we count three. <laughs> Enough, said her mother. That's it, said her dad. Her parents were frustrated, frazzled, and mad. Why, Ada questioned. Her mother said, no. What, Ada queried. Her father said, go. You've ruined our supper. You've made the cat stink. Enough with your questions. Now sit there and think. She looked at her parents. Her heart turned to goo. Poor Ada Twist didn't know what to do. Oh, dear. They're, they're very perturbed at Ada's actions. She was just trying to find an answer, but she caused a little bit of a mess. She sat all alone by herself in the hall, and Ada, once more, could say nothing at all. There she is by herself. And so Ada sat, and she sat, and she sat. She thought about science and Stu and the cat, and how her experiments made such a big mess. Does it have to be so? Is that part of success? Our mess is a problem. And while she was thinking, what was the source of that terrible stinking? Ada Marie did what scientists do. She asked a small question, and then she asked two. And each of those led to three questions more. As Ada got thinking, she really dug in. She scribbled her questions and tapped on her chin. She started at why and then what, how, and when. At the end of the hall, she reached why once again. And then, ooh, she has thought a lot. <laughs> ooh, dear. Yeah. Her parents calmed down and they came back to talk. They looked at the hallway and they just had to gawk. 
No patch of bare paint could be seen on that wall. The thinking chair now was the great thinking hall. They watched their young daughter and sighed as they did. What would they do with this curious kid who wanted to know what the world was about? They smiled and they whispered, we'll figure it out. And that's what they did, because that's what you do when your kid has a passion and heart that is true. They remade their world and now they're all in on the act of helping young Ada sort fiction from fact. She asked lots of questions. How could she resist? It's all in the heart of a young scientist. Scientist? Scientist, yes. Scientist. Here we are, doing the science experiments. And there's her family helping her out. And as for that smell, what can Ada Twist do but learn all she can with her friends in grade two? Will they discover that stink that curls toes? Well, that is the question. And someday, who knows? And that is the story of Ada Twist. Scientist. That's her. Yay. No, it's at the very top. Yay! Isn't that fun? That was pretty fun. Here, I'm gonna... This is the music. I don't know if you could hear it at all, but it was very fun. <laughs> Thank you. So yes, so that, that app that you can download is called Novel Effect, and you um, there's lots of stories to, to choose from. Some stories that we've done here are actually in that library, so it's a very fun time. Good. Yes, and we you can try it again. Yeah, we can try it again with another story. Maybe you have some of the stories at home. Maybe you can get them some from the library. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Probably we have a lot of things at the library here. But yes, that was the story of Ada Twist. I really like this story. That was kind of cute. It was nice. Um, Ada has a very inquisitive mind. She thinks a lot of things and has a lot of questions. And the best part of the story, I think, was when her parents decided to. Um, help her with her experiments instead of you know uh, probably it wasn't a good idea to be putting the cat in the the, the dryer or the washer right yeah no, not not no. a good idea but in the end they were able to kind of find a way to help her constructively with her thoughts and her experiments uh, that did not include cat washing so no, that's good <laughs> that's why i don't have a cat yeah because you might put them in the, I, the I washer. Might, I it might. might happen. Yeah. You know. Yeah. No. But hopefully not. Hopefully. Hopefully not. not. But yes, Ada Twist Scientist, check it out. I have a nice song that's kind of about that same thing, um, about being yourself. Because Ada had to learn how to be herself in order to be the best scientist she could be. And sometimes she did have to face, um, you know, people that were telling her that she shouldn't be that thing. But she did it anyways, and she was able to be herself to the point that other people realized that they could help her be the best herself. And so that's why I have a song called Being Yourself Go figure. by Callie Jean. Here we go. Being yourself, it's the best way to be. The best myself, there's only one, it's me. The formula is perfected to a T. So step right up for everyone yourself, being yourself, being yourself, being yourself, being myself, being myself, being myself, being myself, being yourself, it is the nicer way to live your life and make it through the day. When I'm myself, I face the sky and say, Yourself, being yourself, being yourself, being yourself, being myself, being myself, being myself, being myself. Sometimes others fill you full of doubt. Best not dream big, never know, watch out. Remember not to let your worry. 
all about being yourself, being yourself, being yourself, being yourself, being myself, being myself, being myself, being myself, being yourself. It's time. It's time for a science experiment. I'm very excited about this. I'm dancing around. Okay. Let's go to Craft Corner. Wait, wait, wait. What? It's it's not Craft Corner. No? It's Science Corner. Oh. Isn't it? Yes. Today, Craft Corner is Science Corner. It looks yes. absolutely nothing different, but here we are <laughs> anyways. Da -na, na 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 Seamless transition. I'm going to raise this just a little bit. So you can see the scientists. Oh, there we go. See, I can't. Okay, here we go. Are we good? Do you want first or second? Oh, I don't know. We'll find out. Mr. Aaron, I might need you to. Okay, no, I think we're fine. I think we're good. Could you look on the thing and see if the bottle is in the frame? Is the bottle in the frame? Because that's the important part. Hold, please. Okay, we're finding out. Hi, everybody! It's me, Miss Callie. Again, I'm still here. Oh my gosh, I haven't gone off the screen. It's great. And this is Miss Barb. Hi, Miss Barb. Hi. Miss Barb has some super cool glow lights around her yes. neck. Yes. Yes, very sciencey. Sciencey. You can see the bottle. Okay, you can see the bottle. Perfect. Well, we are here standing up in Science Corner. Gonna learn how to do a science experiment. So usually you're doing a craft with us. Yes. Is this? I've been talking and hearing about explosions. Is yes. This happening now. We are. This is happening. We are doing explosions. So uh, we're gonna be mixing some chemicals. So if you have gotten the stuff at home to do this, go and gather it. I'm sure you already have it nearby. We're gonna lay it all out here. I'm gonna list off exactly what we need. Here we are. I have my little. This is my little reference guide right here. Okay. So the first thing that actually we need to do before we start anything else is get prepared and have some protection. Safety first. Safety first. So gloves, very important. I have my fabulous, gorgeous, stunning gloves right yes, here. And I have just nice yellow gloves. Yeah, they're very nice too. Oh. Stunning. Okay. <laughs> Putting on that. So that keeps your hands safe because we are going to be using some chemicals today. Nothing too crazy, but we do need to make sure we're staying safe. Okay. And yeah, it should go without mentioning, don't don't eat any of the things that we're gonna be doing. <laughs> oh, everything is so pink. Yes, and I, I provided some some glasses for Miss Barb, and I, as you can see, also have some glasses. So here we are. Oh, it's very foggy in here, but that is okay because my eyes are going to be stunning. Okay, maybe not. It's very yeah. hot in these. I don't want you to not be able to see and well, explode here we the are. house. We're gonna be just fine. Okay, so here we are. What you're going to need is an empty plastic bottle. Here's our plastic wow. bottle. This is just a water bottle. I'm sure you can find one of those. Um, next we have dry yeast. Yeast. Yes. It's the yeast you can do. It's the yeast you can do, Mr. Says. <laughs> so this is just a little packet of yeast. This is what you use to make bread rye. So it's very, has some, some molecules in it that are gonna be part of the reaction. Okay. Then warm water. I have already poured the warm water here. There you go, it's very warm. It was hot before, but now it has cooled off and it is warm. Liquid dish soap. You might be able to find this next to your dishwasher or your sink. You That's where people keep it, right? Yeah. 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 Or under the sink. Or under the sink. Dish soap. Very stunning, absolutely gorgeous. Okay. <laughs> um, and then here's the toxic chemical. I mean, these are all chemicals, but this is hydrogen peroxide. They use this to make sure that you're, if you get like a cut or a, or a scrape, make sure that this gets disinfected make sure you don't get an infection. But today we're gonna to be using it as part of our experiment. So there's the hydrogen peroxide, 3%. Okay, also we need measuring cups. Here we go, measuring cups and measuring spoons. Ooh. Then of course, safe glasses, we already went over that. And we have like a little tray to catch the explosion. It's not gonna to be too much, hopefully. 
I did this before and I have done this experiment before. Yeah, you were okay? Uh, we it was okay. Everything worked out. <laughs> well, her skin turned yellow. Yeah, so. that's what I'm worried about. Well, then this was a completely different thing. I, this is just this is just how I look. Okay. Anyways, um, so it's gonna there's gonna be some foam. Spoiler alert. Okay. Then um, you can do this outside. That's probably the best thing. It does smell mostly like bread after. Oh. So if you want your living room to smell like bread, fine. <laughs> if not, maybe open a window. Okay. And then, you don't have to do this, but we are going to. We have some liquid food coloring, and that can make it look extra. So I'm going to have you stuff in just a little bit. I feel like I'm taking over the whole thing. It's okay. Liquid food yeah, coloring. Everything's better with color. Yes, color is great. And then, um, you can, if you want, this the, the thing on scientificamerican.com, this is where I'm getting the experiment from. And I have links on our Instagram and Facebook. You can get little different, like, bottles and things. Okay, so it can make different types of explosions. Yeah, because you've got the different sizes yeah, of the openings see, there. See, like the, the nozzles. So when it comes out, it can it can look different or do different things. You can kind of experiment all around. But we only have enough to do one today. So we're going to do this one because I think that it makes the coolest thing. So, preparation, put on your safety glasses. First thing, we're gathering the materials. Ooh. Here we go. Oh, goodness. Miss Barb, can you scroll up? <laughs> It's very hard to do. Well, you're wearing the gloves, too. It's okay. We're good. Okay. I figured it out. So, first thing, measure one half cup of hydrogen peroxide. This is your um, toxic chemical. So, have an adult help you do this. Just screw off the top here. Okay. And I'm just going to put this in the tray so it's, you know, there. This is a quarter cup measure, so we're actually going to do two. So we're pouring them in the bottle? Yes. Okay, so we so have a little so funnel. Get the funnel ready. So Perfect. It's Thank it's you, Miss Barbara. Okay. Putting the fun in funnel. Putting the yes. fun in funnel. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're going to pour in this hydrogen peroxide. That is a quarter cup into the funnel. Ooh, there we go. There's one. And two. Absolutely gorgeous. Wonderful. Okay. I'm just going to put this back here. Seal up the chemicals. We don't have to open the chemicals. Okay. Setting that aside. Next. Here is, so here's the, here, I'm just going to skip ahead just a little bit. The, it, the reaction that we're going to be doing, so it's going to be mostly between the yeast and the hydrogen peroxide. And it's going to make like lots of air escape. But in order to make the actual bubbles come out and have it react with the air that's going to be reacting with each other, you have to put some dish soap in. So you don't even have to put that much in, but we're going to do like a little squirt. Here we go. Squirt, 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 squirt. And that is good. Got some blue dish soap. You can do some clear dish soap, whatever you'd like. Okay. And it says to gently swirl to mix. So we're just making sure that it's all evenly distributed, so it's not just a bunch of <laughs> soap at the bottom of the bottle, yeah. as you know. Okay, so there we go. Ooh, is he even making bubbles right now? Okay. When do we do the colors? Right now. <gasps> Here we go, doing the colors. So we have purple, blue, probably don't want to do blue because it's already yeah. in the blue. Green and pink. What do you want to do? Um, I think we should do green and green? purple. Green and purple. Okay, here's green. So what you can do is you can color all of the foam by just putting it in, or, and this is probably what we'll do because I think it will give us some more variety. Open this up, and then just take your bottle, this is why you're wearing the glue gloves, kind of tip it on its side, and you're gonna take this and make the, um, the, the food coloring kind of drip along the outside. So when it comes out of the bottle, the food coloring is coming collect, out as the, well. The foam. Yes. Attracts to the colors. So do you want to do some, do you go ahead and put some green in there just like I did. Absolutely gorgeous. This is going to be some very colorful foam, everybody. I'm excited. Some green. Okay, so we got green and purple. Okay. I think we should be good on that. Okay. Then, when you have a measuring cup, so this is where the measuring cup of warm water comes in. You have that. And then Miss Barb. Yes. Could you cut open some I, yeast? Yeah, been there. Perfect. Okay. Oh, you already did it. And I just took some, a little um, uh, measuring spoon, and we're just going to uh, put it in slowly so that I can mix it around. You need more. Oh, you want the yeast in the, yeah. the whole 
Yes, the whole thing. Oh, well, okay. I was going to put it in slowly, but we'll just mix it. Sorry, Miss Kelly. Oh, you're fine. It'll be just fine. Basically, we just need the yeast to be in like a liquidy form so that we can pour it neatly into the bottle. Well, it's beginning to smell like bread. Yeah, it smells like bread, I'm telling you. <laughs> can you smell the bread? Well, probably not you over Facebook. Can you smell the bread, Mr. Aaron? Yes, I can. Oh, goodness. Okay, so here it is. All mixed together. Absolutely bready. Okay, here we go. Now, are you ready? Are you ready, everybody? Yay! The yeast is going to mix with the hydrogen peroxide. And the molecules together are going to make bubbles and the bubbles are going to make or make air escape and then the air escape is going to stir up the dish soap and make a bunch of bubbles ready here we go in three two, two one. one blast off put it in real quick okay here we go oh it's coming to the top of the bottle Green and purple. <laughs> it's very cute. Take these off so I can see yes. the colors. We're going to zoom in. Oh, wow. Very stunning. Very excellent. Excellent choice of yes. colors. Yes. Here, zoom in even closer. Okay, here we go. Ooh. Oh, there we go. I'm going to move it. There is the explosion. And that is what happens. I'm going to lift it very carefully. That's what happens when you mix hydrogen peroxide and yeast and dish soap. Cool. Very fun. Okay, so there is a little explanation I'm going to read because I think it is important to understand what is happening here. Okay. So if you had not done the bubbles or done the dish soap in this experiment, it probably would have made such a big reaction. Because like I said, the hydrogen peroxide comes in contact with the yeast and this is from Scientific American. It starts breaking down the water and the oxygen. And uh, oxygen is a gas, so it wants to escape the liquid. So it goes, puffs up like it's still doing right now. Oh, that's so crazy. And so it traps the, the, the um, dish soap is trapped inside the gas bubbles and it forms the foam and the foam just has to have somewhere to go. So it goes right up the top and it makes this, oh, this is super cool. I want, Mr. Aaron, can you show it again? It's the soap fun on the, on the, on the thing, on the stuff with the things. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my goodness. This is very hard. We don't have, I just, I love all the colors. Woo. And this is what we call elephant's toothpaste. That's the shorthand for this experiment. Ooh. Cause it kind of looks like when it's coming out of the bottle, like to uh, toothpaste, toothpaste that an elephant would. <laughs> What an elephant would use. Lucky elephant. Yes. I'd use that toothpaste. <laughs> but like I said, do not eat it. Do not eat it. Do not eat it. Because you're not an elephant. You're not an elephant. Well, don't don't feed it to elephants. If you by chance have an elephant, I'd like to don't see your elephant. Don't feed it to your elephant either. But don't put it on your elephant. It just kind of looks like elephant toothpaste. Anyways. That's the explosion. <laughs> yes. Experiments. Science experiments. Thank you, Miss Barb. We're going to shake hands because we have proper hand equipment on. Yes. Wonderful. It's a wonderful time. It's a okay. wonderful time. That was a wonderful time. I thank had a you. lot of fun. Yes, thank you. Okay, so we're going to get back to reading now. And if you want to, I, if you have, oop, I'm just going to move this back to where it was. Okay, if you have a science experiment that you did today, we would love to see it. So send us pictures, post pictures, and we can even post it on the Instagram if you want. And we can show, we can showcase all of your, uh, Elephants, toothpaste, things. And your elephants. And your elephants. If you have elephants, we must see them. It is very important. Yes. That is happening. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. That was awesome. That was a fun science experiment, wasn't it? <laughs> I, I kind of, because I forgot to brush my teeth this morning, mm -hmm. so I kind of want to just... No! Don't eat it! I, it's, it's pretty. It is pretty, but you shouldn't eat it. It's very important. Okay. Miss Barb is sitting and watching the feed that's right in front of her. <laughs> <laughs> so don't eat it. Awesome. Don't it's eat not going it. Okay. Out. Everybody's watching reading time today. Okay, so exactly. now we have another book. I'm very excited about this book as well. It's about another scientist, but this scientist is a bunny just by chance. It's right there. Oh! Snuck up on me. This is Charlotte the Scientist, and it's called Charlotte the Scientist Finds a Cure. 
Ooh, so part of science is working with diseases and sicknesses and trying to find ways to make people better. So that's what scientists do. That's why we learned. So we did, of course, an explosion today. Explosion. But a scientist also works on sicknesses. Yep. So we're going to learn about Charlotte the Scientist. And this is written by Camille Andros, and it's illustrated by Brianne Farley. Here we go. There we go. Okay. Charlotte was a serious scientist. She spent her days doing research, performing experiments, and solving problems. So here's Charlotte. She's doing, uh, she's reading about science. Everybody's in the background, having a fun time. Okay. She lives in the woods. <laughs> Charlotte lived in the, it says right here. Charlotte lived in the forest. <laughs> with her bunny-sized family, which was bigger and better than ever, because Grandpa had moved in. Woo! There is the family. That is Grandpa. Oh, I can't point. There's Grandpa. There's Charlotte. And there's the bunny-sized family. There's a lot of there's a lot of kids in that family. Oh, my goodness. You're not kidding. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Grandpa was wise. He had many awards, and when he spoke, everyone paid attention. So there we go. There's Grandpa. He has awards. He's very wise, and here's him speaking. Here, I'll move closer. There we go. Every day, Grandpa visited Charlotte in her lab. He watched her doing research, performing experiments, and solving problems. Every day, Grandpa said, Charlotte, you are going to make a real difference in the world. Charlotte paid attention. See, kind of like Ada, she has, um, she has grown-ups that believe in her, so she, she feels very inspired to, uh, you know, continue her science and be herself. Very nice. Very nice. I like it. One day, Grandpa didn't come to the lab. He was sick. And Grandpa wasn't the only one. A mysterious malady had infected the animals of the forest. Charlotte wanted to help. Maybe this was her chance to make a difference. Here we go. Here's all the, the animals. There's Charlotte, but she's noticing. See, this bunny is sick. I think that the mouse is a little sick. I think that that... Uh, that, I don't know if that deer is sick or just scared of the malady, but we shall see. We shall see. She swapped her magnifying glass for a stethoscope. That's a, like a little thing that you put, you know, doctors have to listen to your heartbeat. A stethoscope. Her protective glasses for a mask and gloves and got to work. It was time for some serious medical science. Charlotte would find a cure. So here she is getting all masked up, getting the gloves on. Oh, and there's her steth steth stethoscope. Steth stethoscope. 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 Sometimes it's difficult to say words, and that's okay. <laughs> first, first, she collected a complete medical history on each pa patient. So she, here she is talking to a deer. She's like, what seems to be the problem? Next... She gave a thorough physical exam. Patient privacy was a top priority. So here, here's the medical exam, but the bear is behind the sheet because sometimes that can be a very personal time. Okay. Then she gathered specimens. And by specimens, yes, this is happening. It is poop. There's all the poop bags and there's everybody getting the specimens. And there's Charlotte who's saying, next! But her results were inconclusive. Here we go. She's like, what am I going to do? What's the conclusion? Charlotte was stumped. The infection was spreading fast. So she imposed a quarantine. You might have heard this word a couple times. Quarantine. But keeping bunnies in one place was next to impossible. The birds kept flying away and skunk stinking simultaneously was proving problematic. So 
This like, so in quarantine, you have to make sure you keep all the sick people in, uh, in a place away from everybody else so that the, the, the sickness doesn't, doesn't spread. So there you have it. Everybody is in quarantine. It's very cramped, but this is what has to be done. Meanwhile, a team of doctors arrived to visit Grandpa. Charlotte was eager to share her research and work with them to find a cure, but instead, <coughs> they ignored her. And this bear says, run along, little one. This is <clears throat> grown-up work. Don't you hate when the grown-ups say that? Ugh. Sometimes it is grown-up work, but it still stinks to hear. So there's Charlotte. She's like, look, I've done all this work. And there's the bear being like, um... And there's, and there's Grandpa, he's sick, but all the doctors are like, hmm, we must help him. Charlotte wondered if they were right. She was little, and the doctors were very <coughs> smart. Maybe she should leave it to the experts. So she's kind of doubting herself here, so here's Charlotte. And all the experts are crowding around Grandpa trying to do their work, but they told her she's too little to do it. But then she remembered what Grandpa had told her. Charlotte, you are going to make a real difference in this world. She would find a cure herself. So she remembered what her Grandpa had told her and it made her feel uh, powerful enough to find a cure herself. So here she is very confident. She's like, I'm not gonna listen to those other scientists. I can do the job too. So Charlotte dissected the data studied the samples, and plotted out patterns. Here she is. So she's looking at the data. I'm bouncing up and down here. <laughs> looking at the data, and then she's um, studying the samples here, the samples, and she's making like a map of where everyone is getting um, sick right here. Soon, a curious carrot connection emerged. So there's carrots. Let's see what happens with the carrots. Oop. Everyone who was sick had been eating carrots. In fact, the carrots hadn't looked right for quite some time. Charlotte formed a hypothesis. If everyone was sick who had been eating carrots, then the carrots were what was making everyone sick. So here she was. She was thinking about the fact that they had all eaten carrots and now they're sick. And she was like, hmm, maybe these two things are connected. So that was her hypothesis. That was her, her working question. Charlotte consulted the comprehensive compendium of carrot conditions. It could only be one thing. Forest, funky forest fungi. Fungi? Funky forest fun, fungi. 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 Funky forest fungi. I'm sorry, I'm waiting for you to make a joke about fun guy, but okay. <laughs> no, Charlotte's a girl. Why would she be a fun guy? <laughs> he has jokes about all kinds of punny things and he didn't even pick them up. Earlier, earlier, I wanted to make a joke about like the, the bear getting an exam, but I couldn't bear it. <laughs> and the deer that was sick, I was just thinking, oh dear. <laughs> you okay whatever anyways after careful consideration <laughs> charlotte came up with a second hypothesis if eating the infected carrots was making everyone sick then stopping the car contaminated carrot consumption could be the cure so here she is the funky forest fun guy reading about it and she's like if we get them to stop eating the carrots then they won't get sick anymore so she runs into the farmer's market. Stop! Do not eat the carrots! And what do you think they do? Exactly what the scientist tells them to, because that's what you should do. Was Charlotte, being a bunny, was she harrying the market? Um, she's what? She's a bunny rabbit. She's also called a hare. Harrying the... And she's harrying the market. Harrying... Um, yes? Herring. I know, that was a stretch. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just stop jumping to conclusions. Okay. Charlotte went back to work. The carrots needed to be cured. So she created a customized carrot corrective. Charlotte thought a few sprays a day should do the trick. So 
So there she is. She's doing experiments. She's like, here we go. This is what I know about the funky forest fungi. Oh, she's using a microscope. Very cool, very cool. And she makes a, um, a thing that makes them better. So here's the, the carrots. And she's just doing a couple sprays and they get better. And here's the fungi. Here's the fungi. It worked! Boom, 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 boom. Boo, 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 boo. It worked. Yay. But Charlotte didn't stop there. She conducted a clinical trial to see if eating cured carrots could mend the malady. It did. So here they are, they're doing a couple sprays a day. It's very nice. My baba says that she likes our joking back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> and there she is, um, feeding the, the cured carrots, and then they get better. Okay. Charlotte realized that she didn't need to be the oldest or smartest. She had stopped the sickness, cured the carrots, and saved the forest. Charlotte had made a difference. So here you go. She made a, a, oh, a carrot. See, I'm sorry about this. <laughs> it's, it's different because the camera is backed up for me. Anyways, um, she cured the carrots and then she made a carrot stew and then everybody's eating the stew so they can get better. Best of all was the difference in how she saw herself. There she is. Everybody's cured, eating the carrots. And her grandpa is cured too, and she he gives her a hug. Because she found out she can do it and followed her grandpa's advice. Very nice. Yeah. And, okay, so if you get this book, there's a bunch of terms that are used during the book in the lab with Charlotte, it said, and we'll go through a couple. Okay. Clinical trial is an experiment that tests the effects of a treatment on a group of individuals. So, like when she said, Charlotte conducted a clinical trial to see if eating cured carrots could mend the mysterious malady. You want to say that again? Yeah. Charlotte conducted a clinical trial to see if eating cured carrots could mend the mysterious malady. Much better. Thank you. Um, also, very cool words like malady is just a sickness or a disease. Hypothesis is a best guess answer to a question, an idea or theory that hasn't been proven yet usually includes the words if and then. So like when she said, Charlotte made a hypothesis about the carrots, if everyone who was sick had been eating carrots, then the carrots were what was making everyone sick. And she found out that that was the case. And then quarantine's another good word. Quarantine, an order to keep sick people or animals away from those who are healthy. So that's that was used when they said, to keep the infection from spreading, Charlotte imposed a quarantine. Mm -hmm. It's very important in medical yeah. science, yeah. I, I really like that story. That's a nice story. Yeah, Charlotte was living in the forest. Yes. And then went out on a limb yep. to find a cure. Yep. And didn't leave it alone. Okay. See, this is what happens when I, when I ask him to do exactly what I ask him to do. He does it a lot. And now you're barking at me. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Anyways, I like this story not only because Charlotte discovered that she could be herself and apart from what everyone else was saying, but she also, um, this was a good example of following the advice of medical science to make sure that you are getting better and everybody's getting healthy. Very good thing. I have a, a, a very fun song to, to finish this off today. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I am so sorry. You're totally fine. Things happen. Oh. You sneezed into your shirt, so that's a good thing. I did. I did. I'm sorry. Ta-da! There we go. Science! Science. <laughs> Explosion. If you do have to sneeze, sneeze into your elbow or shirt away from people. It's very important. Okay, anyways, moving forward. I have a song that is about germs. Yes, that is happening. So in the song, I play a germ. So you have to watch, listen to the song, and that's about the germs. Okay. And this is what, this is called a journey of a germ. So this is what happens to a germ. Okay. And since we were talking about finding a cure, I thought it worked. Okay. There we go. <laughs> I like this. I was minding my own business, living in Robert's nose. I'm just a teeny tiny germ. Here's how my story goes. I'm always ready to travel, but my trips are never planned. 
it was time to hit the road when Robert squeezed into his hand. So here comes his old buddy Bill, his handshake was so firm. I climbed aboard his hand and went on the journey of a term. Now Bill, he needed milk and eggs as he walked into a store. He left me on the doorknob when he opened up the door. Karina touched the door and said hello to Mr. Sands. They chatted by the vegetables, she forgot to wash her hands. <laughs> My name is Sheldon Sherman, some people call me Sherm. I was traveling with Karina on my journey of a germ. Hand to hand, oh, hand to hand, that's the way I travel. Karina bought a ticket and she hopped onto the train. The conductor shook her hand and said, enjoy your ride to Maine. We got off in Bangor, we were happy to arrive. The conductor met the mayor and gave him a big high five. The mayor shook hands with the senator, running for a second term. And he shook hands with a majorette on the journey of a germ. The majorette was at a football game, her baton had hardly twirled. I'd given her a cold and traveled halfway around the world. She sneezed into her elbow. I thought I was gonna cry. She washed her hands. reading time with Mr. Aaron. And that's the journey of a germ. <laughs> ah! Ah! Ah, so dramatic. I know. Well, when when the majorette washed her hands, the germ died oh, forever. That, that makes sense. See, they liked it. Oh, yay. <laughs> I'm so happy. Okay. I think that's about enough science for today. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Yay. I got one more. Okay, go ahead. With that story, yes. you kept me grounded. You, yes, you're, you're welcome, Miss Herring. You're, you're welcome. Oh, my goodness. Okay, um, <laughs> this was science time. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want us to do more experiments in the future, let us know. We really like experiments. Probably won't do them all the time, but they're very, very fun. Very fun. Yeah. Um, yes, and what else is happening? Oh, we have a very special, extra special reading time that's going to be coming up on yes. the 29th of August. Idaho Falls Pride is going to be hosting us digitally on their Idaho Falls Pride cast. Yes, Mr. I'm excited. Yes, Mr. Aaron's going to be there. I will. Mr. Yes, you Oh, are. yes, I will. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Already <laughs> on my calendar. We're good. <laughs> Not miss, miss it. Yes, Mr. Buster is going to be there, and Miss Barb is going to be there as well. And we're going to be doing a craft again. It's going to be a wonderful time. It's going to be absolutely stunning. Um, yes, and you can find more information. We're going to have some on our reading time pages, but also on Idaho Falls Pride. So make sure you join us for that. It's going to be another Pride themed event. It's going to be great, and um, they're doing an extra theme of community. So Yay. I want to thank everybody for joining us thank today. You, thank you, thank you, thank so you much. to Miss Barb. Yeah, Miss Barb. Barb. Okay. Come on over here. Miss Barb. Miss Barb. Miss Barb. Yeah. Miss Barb. Am I in? Oh, in the, right in here. Right in here, sweetie. Right in here, right Yay. <laughs> thank you. Yay. Thank you, Miss Barb. Mr. Aaron. Hello. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And me, Miss Callie. Thank you for thank joining you. us. Yes. It was an absolutely stunning time. Yay. And we also have Mr. Zay is over here, but he didn't want to be on camera. But thank you for Mr. Zay. Thank Yay. you. Thank you. And Miss Brittany's here too, but she didn't want to be on camera. We have, we have lots of people helping us, so it's a wonderful it's a time. Big, it's a big reading time studio today. Yes, we are doing a lot of reading time studios. Okay, thank you everybody for joining us. We will see you next time. I have False Pride, and then Yay. we're going to have another uh, reading time next month. It's going to be bedtime stories. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yes, have a wonderful time, everybody. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Oh, can I close? Oh, I have my gloves. My gloves. Is it going to work?